This video here is to find the cross-sectional area of a given wire using a screw gauge as you can see written in the aim here. So this instrument is what is called a screw gauge. Now this is an instrument which is used to measure very very small lengths like your vernier caliper. But this is even better than a vernier caliper. You know, uh, we could see that the vernier constant or the least count of the vernier caliper was 0.01 centimeters, if you remember. And of course, the least count is the smallest length which the instrument can measure. Any measuring device will have something called its least count. Okay, we will see that its least count is even more small, even smaller than that of the a vernier caliper so it can measure lengths lesser than that of the vernier caliper so this is the wire as you can see how fine wire this is how small wire this is okay we want to measure the radius of this wire of course we won't be able to measure the radius of this wire using a ruler using a scale okay it is much smaller than a millimeter all right so uh, what are the apparatus the instruments that are needed, of course, the wire that I showed you and the screw gauge, of course. Now, the very first thing that you do when you get hold of this instrument is try to find its least count, of course. All right. Now, before we find the least count of this instrument, we will find something called its pitch because we will require this pitch to calculate the least count because the formula for least count of the instrument is pitch divided by the number of circular divisions as you can see written so we want to find the pitch so this screw gauge if you look at it carefully okay this has markings graduated in this in the circle over here okay so these markings these graduations are what are called the circular scale of the screw gauge I turn it, you can see 80, 90, 0, it starts with 0 of course, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 and between, you know, 90 and 0, there are 10 more divisions, so there are a total of 100 circular divisions, so to see. And as I'm turning it in the anti-clockwise sense, you can also see markings over here, okay, you can see the 0 written over here. All right, let me turn it further. Let me rotate it further. So you can see. Let me try focusing the camera better. So this is zero. You can see five written over here. All right, let me turn it further. You will see then after 10 written. Okay, here. All right, so that is your 10 here. So this is a 10, this is a 5, this is 0. So these markings are your main skill, something called your main skill. And there's one fine horizontal line over here. Uh, uh, let me try focusing it. Okay, there's one fine horizontal line over here. All right, I don't know whether you can make it or not. That is the reference line. Okay, and these markings over here, this is called the main scale. Okay, so zero is this is in millimeters, graduated in millimeters. This is zero. This is this five is five millimeters. This ten is ten millimeters, which means from zero to ten is one centimeter. So we have the main scale and the circular scale in case of the uh, screw gauge. All right. And what you can see, what you just saw is as we started turning the screw. As we started turning the screw, you can see that the screw is traveling some, you know, linear distance. It is traveling some linear distance, as you can see. So the 10 got covered because it is traveling a linear distance. So I'm turning it and 5 is also about to be covered. 5 millimeters length is also about to be covered. So 5 is there covered. Okay, so you see that when we turn the screw, when we rotate the screw, the screw travels some linear distance. All right. So what is there for pitch? Okay. What is this pitch? Remember, pitch is the linear distance which the screw travels when it is given one complete rotation. Okay. So what we will do is, 
what we will do is let us meet the let us allow the two jaws to meet okay the two ends of the screw gauge to meet so what we have here is ideally what should happen is the there's the zero of the circular scale as i showed you okay the zero of the circular scale should exactly coincide with the reference line there okay so the zero of the circular scale should exactly coincide with the zero of the, the so here is the small part of the reference line that you can see down below here and here is the zero of the circular scale all right okay so so this is a zero of the circular scale so this is the reference line and this is the zero of the circular scale you know intentionally i have chosen a screw gauge where there is no error okay this is the ideal scenario where the zero of the circular scale exactly matches with the reference line if the zero of the circular scale goes beyond the reference line or does not reach the reference line when the two jaws of the screw gauge meets then there is an instrumental error in this device and we need to do some corrections for the instrumental error but here i don't want to discuss about corrections okay or errors rather all right so therefore uh, i have taken this uh, i you know screw gauge without an error let me not call it an ideal screw gauge okay so from this zero of the circular scale i will give it one complete rotation that is from one zero to the other zero so 80 i have reached 90 i have reached okay now we are about to reach zero there's too much light shining so here all right so from one zero to another zero of the circular scale i gave it one complete rotation and we want to measure how much is the linear distance the distance traveled in the mean scale okay when we gave it one complete rotation so i have to observe it carefully very carefully you need to observe it you need to observe the mean scale to see how much is the linear distance traveled so the linear distance the screw travels when it is given one complete rotation is one millimeter you can see the first graduation over here okay uh, you have to take my word over here because it's not very clearly visible in the video here so it is the linear distance it travels is one millimeter like i said you need to take my word here when it is given one complete rotation therefore pitch is one millimeter and like already we've seen number of circular divisions is 100 therefore pitch divided by number of circular divisions gives us the least value of length which this instrument can measure the smallest value of length which the instrument can measure which is called the least count and this is equal to 0 0.01 millimeters or 0 0.01 centimeters so this is how you calculate least count then after what we need to do is we see after you know we calculate the least count half the job is done then we only need to of course you know make the observation table and start taking the readings now in order to take the readings of course what we do is we fit in the wire in between the two jaws of the screw gauge like this all right then after then after what we do is we take the readings at different lengths at different lengths of the wire okay so at different positions of the wire we fix the screw gauge at different positions of the wire like one over here you know another at this point then after another at some other point some way over here like this okay and we take the measurements at different lengths we take at least five observations all right so to say we take readings at five different positions of the length now while taking the reading what we do is we note down the mean scale reading msr means mean scale reading it is in millimeters let's call that a then after we take the circular scale reading let's call that b circular scale reading is simply a number it does not have therefore any unit then this is b then we calculate c c is this circular scale reading multiplied by least count of course then after it will come out in millimeters this will be in millimeters therefore 
All right, then after we find the total. Total is mean scale reading plus C. That is A plus C gives you a total. total. Okay, that will be the length or radius, rather diameter of the wire. Okay, so therefore we calculate the average diameter and thereby the radius which is diameter divided by 2. Now let me show you how to take the readings. Say we are taking the reading at this position of the wire. Okay, so that position is fitted in between the two jaws of the screw gauge. Then after, first of all, this is the first observation. So you'll write observation number one. And we take the main skill reading. Main skill reading as you can see. Okay, you can only, you have to watch the main skill of course. You have to take, you know, note of the main skill. So you can see only zero. The zero reading of the main skill. Nothing you can't see. You can only see the zero of the main scale. So the main scale reading is zero, remember. So the main scale reading is zero millimeters. Then after what you do is circular scale reading you need to take a look at. So in order to take the circular scale reading, what you do is you look at the value of the circular scale which is coinciding with the reference line over here. So your reference line is somewhere over here and you see which circular division is coinciding exactly with your reference line. So you can see here, so this is 50, this is the 60th division. So this is your reference line over here. So you can see about, this is the 59th division that is coinciding. Okay, so for my eye, through this camera, I see it is the 59th division that is coinciding over here with the reference line. So my circular scale reading is 59. It does not have a unit, remember that. Okay, this is zero, zero millimeters, this is 59. Now, uh, at this point, let me tell you one thing. Now, since the eye for different persons, it's different. All right, so the power of the eye for different persons is different. So circular scale reading could be different for different persons. But when I say different, it's not like for one person it is, you know, 10. For the other person it will be like 70. No, it's not something like that. Okay, it will be different but nearby values. Like I said, it's 59 over here. For some other person it could be 60. For some other person it could be 61 or, you know, 58, some, something like that. Okay, but not 20 and 59, something like that for two different persons. It will be different but very close values. Then after what we simply need to do is we need to multiply the circular scale reading value by the least count. Okay, so circular scale reading value is 59 in this case and the least count we found is 0 0.01 millimeters. Okay, as you can see over here, least count is 0 0.01 millimeters. We've already calculated this. So this becomes 0 0.59 mm. This is our C, value of C, which is B, the circular scale reading multiplied by the least count. Then after we find the total, 0 plus 0 0.59 is 0 0.59 millimeters itself. Okay, then what we do is, so this is the observation number one. Then there will be another observation at different position of the length of the wire. Now what I'll do is I will not show you all those, you know, readings taken at different positions of the length of the wire. I will only give you the values of the measurement. Then after we'll take the average. So what I've done here, as you can see, is I have taken readings at different other lengths of the wire also. So five observations in total and for each of the observations the mean scale reading is zero because the radius of the wire is very very small. Okay, so the mean scale reading is zero and you can see I've got different values of the circular scale reading. You know while taking these readings remember while using the screw gauge main scale reading will basically you know not vary it will not change basically. In most cases main scale reading will not change. Okay, but the circular scale reading could change as you can see. So I've multiplied the circular scale reading in each case by the least count. I've got 0.61 mm in the second case, 0 0.57, 0 0.63 and 0 0.6 mm respectively. And thereby the total 
the diameter is 0 0.59, 0 0.61, 0 0.57, 0 0.63, 0 0.6 mm in five different observations. Therefore, the average diameter, I did the calculation, 0 0.6 mm and thereby the radius diameter divided by 2 is 0 0.3 mm. Okay, so, you know, uh, while using this instrument, what you need to do the first, while using screw gauges, first of all, remember, you need to calculate the pitch, okay, you have to, of course, calculate the pitch, then after you need to calculate the least count, once the least count is calculated, more than half of the job is done, then after you only need to, you know, place the device, place the wire kind of a thing, whose length you are measuring, okay in between the two jaws of the screw gauge and measure the main skill reading and circular skill reading that is all all right then after you only need to do mathematics so therefore the cross-sectional area therefore the cross-sectional area of the wire is pi r squared since it has circular cross-section and it comes out to be 0 0.2826 millimeter squared so this is how you find the cross-sectional area of a given wire using a screw gauge